All right, so we are up to our last session of the day for Big Talk from Small Libraries 2021. Um, and it's, I think, it wasn't done on purpose, but an appropriate session for the end of the day, talking about after hours pickup service. So learn how to do it right now from Julie Elmore, and uh, then go off and do it at your library. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just hand it over to you, Julie, to tell us all about how you're doing it there. I will, um, and hopefully y'all are, are uh, patient. Stay with me towards the end of the day. Um, I wanted to do a program that um, is is a pretty much a step-by-step -step how to, and but at the end of this, you'll have product numbers and everything that we used um, to put this program together. Um, but before I start, again, I am Julie Elmore. I am the library director at the Oakland City Columbia Township Public Library and have been for just under 12 years now here in uh, southwestern Indiana. I am also uh, very fortunate to serve the Association for Rural and Small Libraries as a board member. I'm finishing up my um, last year in that role, which I have served in since um, November of 2014, I believe, was when I joined the board. Um, so any chance I have to talk small and rural libraries, I'm, I'm in. So thank you for, for letting me share this program. Um, our library serves right around 3,800 people. We are um, an independent taxing unit, which basically means in Indiana, uh, we don't have to fight anybody for our funding as far as like other city departments. But on the flip side of that, all the bills are ours right down to building expenses. So um, our revenue usually comes in right around $200,000 a year. So we try to run um, as conservative as, as we can with our money, and uh, which is why I was excited when I uh, finally pieced this project together and the total cost for our after hours pickup service was $600. So, well, actually it's under $600. So um, obviously limited money is pretty much what drives most of our great ideas in small libraries. Um, but of course, COVID brought about multiple things that we didn't need to think of before, but we did now. Um, we were open less hours. We had um, a few people that were on staff that um, no longer wanted to work with the public. Um, and so they had opted to leave their positions. And we also needed to prepare for, you know, okay, what happens if somebody has to go into quarantine for two weeks and we run on, I think we're at 2.3 FTE right now. Um, so we were concerned, so we wound up contracting some of our hours. Um, of course, you know, any opportunity to create less contact with people over the summer was, I think, on, on everybody's mind as far as physical contact. Um, you know, mask mandates, of course. I mean, no matter where you are in this country, you've heard mask mandates talked about what good, bad, and ugly. Um, you know, but we have some patrons who don't want to wear them. We have some patrons who absolutely cannot wear them for medical reasons. Um, so we wanted to be able to to help them out as well. Uh, families, even even without COVID, um, I now have all teenagers and young adults in my family. But I do remember, you know, when you would have to schlep all the kids in and all the kids out, and then now throwing in making sure that all the kids are masked and making sure that uh, you know the car seats are in and out. And, and we just wanted to make some we just wanted to make things easier for people because. Quite honestly, 2020 taught us that we all needed to make things easier for us. Um, so I was kind of sitting back and I was trying to kick around um, some ways to find some grant funding because I had seen at previous conferences and um, you know some vending machine type um, things, and then I had seen you know of course you go to the superstores or you know um, and they've got the little you know scan the QR code and your little magic locker opens up and you can pick your stuff up and then I thought, saw the magical price tags for those and thought, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, so, but then after COVID kicked off and, and changed some things, I was like, well, let me, let me, let's start looking at some grant, you know, grant funding and stuff. And then one night, of course, you know, scrolling along on my phone, I stumbled upon on the public library director's uh, Facebook page. I saw Jean Gaskell at a, uh, at Surrey Township Library in Michigan, and she was posting about how, um, that their lockers were getting were, were increasing busyness and that that was the only way that they could um, that they were using for pickup or she was talking about her lockers and I was like wait 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 I know that's a small library up there how on earth did they wind up funding that so I had shot her a message and uh, she told me what they were using and then I just kind of used that as um, you know kind of a way to grow off of that and came up with our solution when I found out she was just using lockers 
And um, so then, of course, I, you know, asked questions like, well, what kind are you using? What about this? Um, and when I found out they were just regular school lockers, I thought, all right, well, that's kind of simple. How come I didn't think about that? And then I went off and I learned way more about locks and lockers and placement and anything that I'd ever actually cared to know about lockers. Um, because obviously, you know, not, not all lockers are meant to just be popped outside in the weather. Um, but I'm super grateful for that post because it just really launched such a great project for us um, that's given us just incredible feedback from our patrons. There is my library. Um, the first thing to consider um, is, is your location and to make sure that you have some place that is weather protected. Um, so you can kind of see ours is actually isolated behind that second column there on the left, or, or well, I guess if you're looking at it on the right um, of your screen there. And it, it's almost like that space was built for it because it just slides right in, but you don't have to have a space that was built just for it to slide right in. You can, there's, there's lots of places that you can, can go to, to put that. Um, you do kind of want to make sure that there is some protection from the weather because again, we wound up using metal lockers. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that it's not, you know, just getting pummeled by, by weather. Um, you also want to make sure that it's in a fairly level location. Um, they are on, they're on legs, but you know, if you've got a little bit of a slope to it, you might want to put or need to put a, uh, like a wood shim underneath it before you attach it. Um, you also want to make sure that it's in a pretty easy location to get to for your patrons. Um, you know, on the other side of the, you know, the beginning part of the sidewalk, we're not that far off of the street. So those families that have, you know, little babies in the car that they would normally have to worry about getting out and bringing in the car seat and all that other stuff. Um, they honestly, they just leave their cars running. They just jog up to the front porch of our library, pop their stuff out of the lockers and they're gone again. Um, and then we also wanted to make sure um, security wise that it was um, in a very well lit place. So we do have, um, you know, it's underneath a lot of our lighting. Um, we also have a security camera that points to it as well. It was already set up that way because we had a camera on our door. So that was kind of a little bonus extra feature um, because you also want to remember if these are after hours, you know, they're coming in a lot of times when it's dark, um, depending on what time they might get off of work or things like that. Um, so uh, originally we actually looked at putting this on the back side of our building, which is where our main entrance actually is. Most patrons um, use the back entrance. But when we were looking at security, we also thought about um, staff security and these sit out probably 15 to about 15 inches deep. And where we thought was the ideal place, we kind of actually set it out there and kind of looked at it. And we realized really quickly that somebody could hide behind it on the side. And we felt that we didn't want when staff was leaving for somebody to be behind them. And even just not even that they would be up to bad things, but just to scare them. And then we also thought, okay, the kids are gonna jump behind here and try to scare anybody coming out of the library building. And that's gonna become a thing. So we actually, once we kind of placed it and looked at all those different things and from all those different, um, all these different ways, we decided that the location out front was actually um, a better location for it. The things you would never think you had to think about. <laughs> right, and you know, once once we put it there, I said, the first thing I saw was some kid hiding behind it and making it his mission in life to jump out and scare me. <laughs> um, so so we wound up moving it to the, to the front um, and, and, uh, and, and moved from there. But once you, uh, once you decide um, on your location, then you can kind of determine what types of lockers you're gonna need and the locks that you'll need. Um, but these are the supplies that we used. Um, the most important thing to us, and um, I actually realized I've got them out of order on my list, is figuring out what locks you want. Um, you know, there's mechanical versus digital. The digital ones are kind of like the hotel safe locks. Um, but my fear was putting them outside. I'm like, okay, now you're gonna have digital locks that are outside in the weather and that's not gonna work well when they get wet. Um, and I, so we wound up going mechanical lock was our preferred 
um, was our preferred method, but you know, if you live in more of a desert community, digital may work well for you. Um, we wanted to make sure that then there's all sorts of different types of locks where, um, of course, obviously the most important thing is that you can code them so that and keep changing that code fairly easily. Um, so we wanted something that was push button because your options were pretty much these push button styles for the numbers or there was, um, oh, I don't even know what they're called, but they're the real tiny little rolling dials that would have, you know, four different things where you would roll them into the combination. Um, and I just thought that those would probably not be um, the easiest thing to use if you had any sort of, of dexterity concerns. Um, nobody will come out and tell you that your locks are, quote, for outdoor use. Um, but again, we decided that the mechanical locks were probably going to last better than the digital locks. Um, so once we had our locks in place, we decided, okay, next up, what kind of lockers do we want? Well, there's metal lockers and then there's also plastic lockers. And I was like, oh, great, there's plastic lockers, perfect. We're gonna put a plastic locker out there, we're gonna put the mechanical locks on there, everything is gonna be gravy cool. Well, that's when I learned after, again, learning more about locks and lockers than I ever thought I would need to know, the mechanical style locks actually do not line up and the plastic lockers will not work because they don't um, they don't have the same type of uh, pre-drilled holes and things of that they fit a different style of lock so that made our decision real easy we went with the metal lockers because they would fit our locks and you know there's rust-oleum you know i can just i can just i can spray rust preventer on the lockers it's kind of hard to do that on the locks um, so once you order your locks and your lockers, and then you'll also learn from my mistake because this, this actually slowed our launch down by two weeks. When you purchase custom locks or locks like this, they don't come with master keys. So make sure on your shopping list that you have master keys. Um, little small lesson learned, but an important lesson nonetheless. Um, then also there's, um, so like I said, we used, we used Rust-Oleum, just clear Rust-Oleum or whatever your preferred um, anti-rust spray is. You will need some um, outdoor grade, waterproof, heavy duty tape. And because we went with the metal lockers and the way that they're mounted, um, you will need a, a, a drill to drill them into the concrete or if you're putting them into the brick or however you're going to attach them um, so that they don't topple over. Um, and then, the Dremel with the, the little metal grinder, or if you have a metal grinder or whatever, um, I'll show you on the next slide. There is one slot that they said these locks fit the all, all lockers, but um, just a, a smidge um, had to come off. But, um, and then you'll also need the bolts and the anchors. Um, so power tool alert for your metal grinder. Right down there is where, if you were in high school, you would put your lock, your combination lock in. Um, that piece does not come out. So um, when you attach this particular Zephyr lock, where it's a little bit larger, I mean, if I if I shaved off an eighth of an inch, I'm probably over, I'm probably over exaggerating. Um, it was probably maybe a sixteenth of an inch. It just was like just enough to like just scrape it by. Um, so we had, I had somebody had a metal grinder and they just, truly nicked them um, along that bottom part there and the locks just fit in like a dream. Um, so that was uh, that was one spot that, um, that we needed to use the tool. Um, the lockers came in and they needed to be assembled. So we just spent, I don't know, it was probably maybe an hour or two um, putting them together. And then in the process of doing this presentation, had I learned this back when I was purchasing our lockers, I would have learned that for $20 more, I could have bought the one that was already assembled. So, um, you know, what, whatever, whatever works for you works for you. Um, but the waterproof tape um, was on the inside towards the top. I was like, well, if, if any water pools along the top of the um, locker, I wanted to make sure that it didn't drain in and leak into the lockers. So, um, and because Gym lockers are built for, again, I have teenage boys and I have teenage sports boys. I know the things that these are designed to hold. So they have a lot of ventilation. Um, so ventilation means holes. So along the top, we just went on the inside of that top locker and put some of that waterproof tape on the inside. 
um, over any of the, there's some like little quarter inch holes that were pre-drilled up there and along the seams across the top. Um, again, then we sprayed, we did a real light coat of Rust-Oleum before we attached the locks. And then we um, did a much heavier coat. Uh, my, my opinion was you really couldn't put enough on. So we just kind of went until we ran out in the cans, um, you know, making sure that, that we were, were extra cautious, I suppose. Um, we did not spray the locks, but I did spray a little bit of the Rust-Oleum onto like a plate and took like a small paintbrush and kind of went around just the seal where the lock met the metal of the locker just to just to give a little bit of extra a um, little bit of extra protection. Um, and then when we installed it, we actually um, we just had, we could have done it ourselves if I really felt like drilling into concrete, I really didn't. So um, we found a local business contractor and they came over and installed them for us. Um, so that was that was convenient for, for me. We just got them all ready and they drilled four holes into the ground and mounted them in for us. Um, this is our list of everything that we purchased right down to the item numbers because I'm a big believer in um, I love it. I, that's that's the best. You know, I've always said that when we're doing programs for small and rural libraries, they need everything all together. Just tell them what to do and 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 where to get it. So mm -hmm. hopefully um, this slide will uh, will help and guide you and kind of give you an idea. Um, but a couple couple of ways that you could save a little bit of money on this. Um, I was actually talking to a friend of mine in um, Iowa who was getting ready to um, do the same project that we had done. And she said that um, in Indiana, we call it the city yard, but like your public works department or um, the, the people who just generally like fix things for the city, <laughs> um, they, they actually had leftover lockers. They had either redone a fire department or um, just had some that weren't being used. Um, your school, your local school may even have some in one of their back storage rooms. So, um, you know, that could even save you a little bit more money um, as, as well. So, um, and also I had, we had happily spent this money and then we found out later that um, we had, we were eligible for some reimbursement for COVID spending. Mm -hmm. And they actually considered this because it, um, lessened the amount of actual physical interaction. They they were like, sure, send it in. We'll we'll refund everything that you spent on it. So, if your city, county, um, state library, somebody has some um, some extra COVID money still that that's waiting to be spent or reimbursed on things, check with them and see if this is not a project that you know they may they may fund it all and refund it for you. Um, and if not, if you if you still even need to go out for like a sponsor, you know, normally we hit, you know, the, the main big places, you know, we, we tend to hit our either the very large factory or we tend to hit the, um, you know, the food, the restaurant places for summer reading coupons and things like that. Um, this is really kind of one of those things where if you've got any business in town that might run some, some shift workers, this would be a great opportunity for them to sponsor because you could sell it to them that it directly benefits their employees who may be working um, odd shifts and can't uh, use traditional library, um, library hours. Um, so now that you know that you can afford it, and now that you know what all we did to actually set it up, um, how, how we actually do it with our processes, um, the, the big part of our process of making it a success, not going to lie, is constant promotion. Um, we are constantly reminding people that this is an option. Um, we, when we are advertising our take and makes, we put in there, if you can't make it to the library to pick up your crafts, let us know. We will, you know, check out the book and the craft to you and we will put them in the locker for after hours pickup. Um, we have um, our, our ILS system will send out um, hold notifications when their items are checked out and ready for them. As part of that notification, we changed the wording that said, if you need after hours locker service, please reply using the word locker. They'll reply back to us. It comes magically through our email. And then we know we'll send them a message back that just tells them what locker. It reminds them um, to use their PIN. And then we also remind them of their pickup deadline time. Um, originally, we didn't do this. If to have, to have and do all over again, I would implement this probably um, from day one. 
we found that we would have one or two people that tended to um, say, yeah, I'm going to pick it up in the locker, but they didn't mean the next day or catch that it was for after hours. They would kind of trade it as a personal hold shelf and they would leave things in there for two or three days. And as popularity grew, we wound up having, you know, no lockers for people because somebody's stuff had been in there for three days. Um, so make sure that you set a pickup time. Ours happens to be the opening time. Um, we open at 11 o'clock right now. So ours is um, please pick up items by 11 o'clock. Um, you know, and then in, the reality is, is about 11, 30, 12 o'clock is when we go out and empty them out. Um, but but we also um, just wanted to make sure that that the patrons recognize because it's designed to be outside of, of regular hours. Um, we also um, uh, use, and it's also a good way to promote that um, whenever we're setting up new accounts, when we set up their library pins, um, you know, a lot of times they're like, well, I'm never going to use eBooks or whatever. But now this constantly pushes a promotion towards reserving online, using the lockers for pick out, for pickup. Um, we also do, um, when we check them out, we do place them in a bag. Um, I didn't put that on your supplies list, but I figured that, um, that uh, it was kind of just an ongoing thing. Um, but we, we actually had for some reason a, an abundance of these really thin um, uh, office liner bags, like an office trash can size. Let's just use those. We just really wanted in case any sort of, of water or whatever were to get into the lockers. Um, we just kind of wanted to have a little um, on them. So we'll bag them up. We put them in the locker, we code the lock, and then we walk away. Um, on the outside of all the lockers, that little um, upper right square there where it says how to retrieve items, we have that posted on every locker so the patrons know how to get in and access their materials. Um, so far, we have had, um, we haven't had anybody not able to figure out how, how to access these locks, um, which is why I definitely recommend that particular style of lock. Um, it's also super easy in the morning for us to um, clear out and, and re recode. Uh, we also keep at our desk um, so that we know what is in what locker. Um, we thought about doing like, you know, a spreadsheet or whatever. And the reality is it's only four lockers because we're a super small library. So we just have a sheet at the desk that's just numbered one through four. And we write down the pin number that is associated to that locker so that we know um, usage and we know um, in the morning if the lock is still locked we know the kit, the pin to, to pop it open real quick um, so that's that's kind of how we use it we also um, use it often too for more than just books uh, matter of fact a couple of days ago I had a lady that had sent something to the library to be printed um, no matter what she will bless her heart, she works for the post office and they're just, you know, they're inundated right now. Um, mm -hmm. And so she was really struggling with getting here to pick up what she needed printed. And I said, tell you what, I'll put it in an envelope, stick it in a locker, use this code, because she didn't have a library card. So I gave her the, the last four digits of her phone number, um, told her to pick it up. And I said, you know, I, mean, it was, I don't know, it was maybe two bucks or whatever. I said, just stick the money in the, in the locker and, and lock it back up and, and you'll be good to go. And uh, so she did, and she wound up picking up her stuff um, about 20 minutes after we had, had closed the, the next day, because um, otherwise I think she was, the way her schedule was, it was going to take her three days to pick up something that she needed printed and sent mm -hmm. out. So it definitely crosses over for more than just, um, more than just the book checkout or just the movie checkout. Um, the, the crafts have been, the crafts go out in those quite a bit as well. The... Uh, Oh, and you can actually also see um, the little tiny holes that we, these are, these were, this locker here was a little bit lower. We didn't worry about taping up those holes, but those holes up across the top were the ones that we covered with, with waterproof tape. 
Uh, good, because somebody was actually asking about that. <laughs> so yeah, I like, yeah. I see holes. What about yeah, the good and wet? <laughs> this one was re this one's really low, and it sits behind our um, our column. And we actually uh, checked it out. We we do try to to keep an eye um, whenever, like after the first big. I was so excited. We launched these in June, and I was so excited. Our first summer storm. I'm outside, and I'm constantly opening up the lockers to see if any water is coming in. And my staff is looking at me, going, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I just want to see if they're." wet and like we're putting paper towels in there to see if anything got wet and um they've, they've just held up really well i will say that um last last week or the week and a half ago whenever the midwest got socked with their great big snowstorm we mm -hmm. took uh nine inches of snow here which wound up being our second highest 24-hour snowfall um in recorded history so i was like all right let me go check those lockers mm -hmm. and it was freezing cold the locks did not lock up i opened them up right along the edge where the door met the the interior of the locker there was probably about an inch of snow um, that was maybe a half inch deep it just just kind of rode right there along the edge um, mm -hmm. and considering that the way that the wind was blowing with that snow i was pretty okay and pretty happy with with just that little bit um, and again nothing had gotten far enough back but even if it had that's the purpose of bagging them up just to make sure double check yeah um we yeah. do have a question also about the the patron pin the library pin numbers you, you were talking about yeah. there um so let's know about if there's if there's any um issue patron privacy issues they said because in our ils you can't see the pin in a patron account and i feel Got like somebody you. would be hesitant to share theirs so yeah, i guess ours, if you, you know yours yeah our the way our ils is set up is that if they want to call in and change that you know if they need to change their pin or reset ours is actually viewable on the staff end um but if that's an issue for you you can always just use the last four digits of their phone number right and then i'm um, gonna say you kind of just almost, almost answered the question by just telling that story about the postal worker that it doesn't have to be the pin anything. yeah 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 truth be told it could be anything i mean if you wanted to just assign random four numbers to them and their text back to them Mm -hmm. That would be, you know, that would work as well. But our ILS actually lets us um, uh, view those on on the staff side, which is really good because when they're logging into um, Envisionware on the computers, the number of times where they go, I don't know my pin, um, <laughs> is is very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so it has been, as I said, it's been just a, a really a great success for us. Um, you know, these are these are actual quotes from people. Um, my my favorite was the, the the person who can't wear a mask and it lets them get their books easily um, without contact. And um, that's uh, that's been um, great. The the Facebook post that's up there uh, was completely unsolicited. She just happened to tag us on her personal wall. Um, so she was, uh, you know. Th so we're hearing really great feedback. And what people really seem to appreciate the most is that this is this goes beyond COVID, right? This is not just a temporary thing of we're altering it this way because of COVID. This is a permanent fixture and it's a permanent service that we are able to provide for relatively um, little money. And we're finding that like our preschool teachers really, really like it because we could put a whole stack of books in there. Um, they'll it's it's really bumped up our usage for people using the uh, online catalog ordering or ordering through the catalog. Um, the, oddly enough, Saturdays have been like, I don't know that there's been a Saturday yet where at least one locker hasn't been used and there have been multiple Saturdays when all of the lockers are full. And I was like, okay, what is going on? Why is it so, you know, why is it, are our hours not right? You know, something. And I started looking at it and, and it's really, it's not even that, A, on Saturdays, people are telling me they don't wanna get up and have to come in early. Um, and they're also telling me that they're not even picking them up on Saturday, they're coming into town Sunday for church anyway, so they're picking up on their way to and from church. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was kind of a, a great way. And then another lady has kind of a weird wonky work schedule, so she drops her kids off and swings right by the library every morning at 7.30, and she's like, I figured y'all don't wanna open that early just for me, and I said, you figured correctly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyways, so she is she's really good, um, enjoying the fact that she's able to have so much more access because before it was very rare for her to be able to get to the library. Um, 
But some other things to note, and oh, there's a train going by. I hope you don't hear that. Um, that that is my library life right there. Um, but also something to note that we've had these up since June. We have not had any signs of rust on them with the exception of one tiny little spot and that was not the locker's fault. That was the fact that we had the building power washed and I did not think to have them put a tarp over it. Mm -hmm. And the spray gun nicked one little corner of the locker. But as I said before, I'm a Rust-Oleum fan. So then I just went out and bought gray Rust-Oleum, touched it up and then cleared it with some more clear coat. Um, so, so that's been, been really great that it's holding, it seems to be holding up just fine. Um, it's going to be a long-term investment for us. And um, I was really thrilled that none of the locks froze up uh, last week. So that, that definitely made us happy. Um, so yeah, so that was, um, those are some of the comments. And then I also wanted to share, not of course, that's, there's our picture of our library again, but um, this other larger bank of libraries, a friend of mine had seen our promotion of it emailed me, got the got the list of what all we used, and she has this huge walk-up space that is under a covered, um, you know, it's under a covering, under a roof, and so they put in an entire bank of lockers. They're a much larger system than we are. Uh, so I thought that that was interesting and just kind of a way that you could see it in use in a different, um, in a different format um, as well. So, uh, I do, I am, I wrapped up early because I wanted to, uh, yeah. we're the last session of the day and I didn't want to be that person. <laughs> so um, I am, I didn't think anybody would be upset if the last <laughs> session of the day ended early, but I am happy to take um, any additional questions. Otherwise, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just want to thank y'all for, for letting me share the story. Hopefully it's something that um, is easy for a library of any size to replicate. Uh, if I had to do it again, though, I do not think I would buy a four-tier locker um, and, and in locker language. Apparently, a tier is the number of lockers per column, uh, where you could see these ones from the library in Arizona. Those are a two-tier because there's two lockers per column. I would have actually bought a six-tiered locker. We are finding that most people are, um, they're not picking up huge stacks. Um, so we could have went with a little bit less height and had more lockers because there's, there's, as it grows, I know the day will come where I'm going to have to look at going, okay, I need to put another one that's going to need to go on the other side column. Um, so I, I should have went with six to get, to get more. Um, yeah. And that's actually somebody asked, um, do you think you'll need to add more? You know, how, I, how popular yeah, has it been? I, yeah. I really do. I think, I think that we will, um, of course, like, it seems like most libraries were still behind the curve of where we were with circulation before. Um, there has there has not been, I think there's only been one day where I had to actually text somebody back and say that they'll be in a locker the next day. Um, mm -hmm. So so for us, our, our circulation is pretty small, but I would, I would venture to say that I would definitely have bought a six tiered locker. I probably would have paid the extra 20 bucks and had it assembled. <laughs> and um, I, I, I do think that we will probably wind up putting in a second set to mirror on the other side. Well, you, you, you learned for us, for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That, that's, that's my, that's my joy um, yeah. is, is to kind of, you know, and like, like I said, I, I had, I had no idea when I started this. I was like, what do you mean they don't fit plastic lockers? What do you mean this? <laughs> and um, I knew I knew it was fun when I was actually on the phone with the actual Zephyr lock company going, this is what I want to do. You tell me what I need to do it. And uh, so so that was, uh, so I, I, I really do, I was really happy with with, with the, the products that we went with. Um, mm -hmm. And Global Industrial sold it all. So it was real easy to just purchase straight from them. Yeah. Did they think you were crazy when you explained what you're going to do or had they heard this before? No, they really, they were kind of like, wow, that's really cool. I wonder if my library would do that. And um, <laughs> yeah, so I was kind of like, yeah, well, you should tell them. And, <laughs> but, but it's, it's kind of one of those things where they're like, well, he was, he was a little hesitant because he's like, well, you know, obviously these lockers are not made for outdoor use, but I don't really see how they're going to go bad on you. Um, so, you know, so, so yeah, they were, they were really kind of surprised. I was really yeah. kind of. I, th I think that's probably been the most honest reaction is people are just like, huh, 
that's a pretty simple idea. Why didn't I think of that? Um, but, you know, like I said, some people kind of get a little hesitant at the idea of putting metal lockers out because, you know, th when they're new, they don't look like they do in the junior high <laughs> for after 30 <laughs> And I don't expect That's ours to have right, the lockers we remember. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say that for preventative maintenance purposes, probably this spring, I'll, I'll break out another, another coat of, uh, of spray and mm -hmm. just kind of top it off. We do that. I've got, you know, we've got metal exterior trash cans and, you know, when they start showing signs of rust, we, we don't replace them. We just fix them and pretty them up a lot again. So um, I think, you know, my ongoing maintenance looks like it's going to be about eight bucks a year. So I'm mm -hmm. okay with that. Uh -huh. All right. We well, have some questions here. Definitely. We'll ask anybody has any questions, just stick around and ask your questions. We have plenty of time for this. Um, we do. So uh, going back to the codes, um, yeah. it's really easy to change the code on them each day. Then I think it it's totally, it totally is actually, uh, let me see if I can go back to the, yeah. Let's so, um, when it is in the unlocked position, you press the C button and that clears the code out. There's and then you enter yeah. yeah, and then you enter in the new code and turn it to the locked position and press the C again. I mean it's it's pretty darn simple to from the staff side to code yeah. it. And I've actually oh here's a little lesson learned too with that. Um, to kind of make sure that staff doesn't accidentally punch a wrong number is we code the locks, we lock them, and then we unlock them to put the books in and then then lock it back up again. Um, because if you, you don't the press the correct. yeah yes. yeah if you don't press the C button, um, it'll just relock almost like you it'll just relock with the same code. So that that was just a little staffing end that wound up taking care of. You know, because the first person naturally that had a wrong code punched in was a board member because that's how life works. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, I can't get into my locker. So the next morning I discovered what the problem was. We redid it. And now she's actually one of our one of our biggest users. But uh, but yeah. And so your codes are not I mean, they're not the the, the you said that you use the library, the their pin numbers on the, mm -hmm. the patron pin. They're not very long codes, right? Was it four digits? You said? Ours is four digits. Yeah. yeah, we opted for four digits. I will say to the about the only time once you have these mechanical locks like this, um, if you imagine like an old school cash register with the buttons that once you push it down, it stays down. Mm -hmm. So if the, if the code is at, you know, if for some reason their pin number is one, 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 technically somebody would come along and just press the one and it would unlock it because mm -hmm. the one has already been engaged. But most people don't, A, they don't have a pin number that is set up with four no, of the same really pins. <laughs> and to the, you know, the, the like that would take somebody knowing exactly how it works and, looking into that particular thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but yeah, but the four digits has worked really well. They're, you know, it, and it's easy to pull four digits even if you have to randomly do it. You can use the last four of their library card, their phone number, whatever works for you, works for you. Sure, sure. Um, a couple of related questions here. Um, what someone wants to know if there's been any trouble with vandalism. And um, no. someone's asking the locks, they're, they're permanently a, a, attached to the lockers, right? It's not loose. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, they're, they're, yeah. On the inside, they're bolted in, um, right. and they're they're very secure. Because um, I was actually in the process of installing them. Um, that was that was something that that we learned was that oh, you really can't get that off unless you really know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> and, but it's also in a very very well lit area, and it's also happens to be on security camera. So, yeah. um, but we have not. I, I yay yay for my town because there has not been any vandalism in there and. Knock on wood, um, you know, now that I've said that, I don't get any. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, I, I think you maybe have answered the question here with, oh, actually, while you're on that screen there, I will um, jump to this one. Um, so I want to know if you can include this as a, um, as a PDF separate from your slides, this particular cost sheet. I surely will. Send me that. Yeah. We'll have that included. So you have that as like a, a one sheet thing for easy access. Yeah make a note to myself because I'll forget that in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Wrote that one um, down. Someone says, and I think with your description of how you did it, I think, because yours yours is just out in the open. There's not a roof or anything over above it covering it, no, right? It, like, it, it actually other, is. 
Oh, you do have a little bit? Okay. Yeah, it's got a little bit of it. It does have an uh, the oh, okay. I see there. Because the um, yeah. person says they don't have, um, they're just, they don't have an overhang. Do you think that it would work with nowhere, somewhere, if they couldn't get them out of the weather completely? Um, I, I think that they would be okay, but with that, I would, I would really, I would, I would really want an overhang, I think, um, just if, especially if you're in a, in a pretty wet area. However, um, you know, if it's going to be a rainy day, if you got a six tiered system and maybe you just didn't use the top tier, you would probably mm -hmm. definitely want to use the waterproof tape on every single hole and seam that, mm -hmm. that you could. Um, and again, it's really not that difficult. It really does just roll off a roll of tape and, you know, kind of, kind of, mm -hmm. uh, line your seams. Um, you could always try it. And then if you had to maybe build some sort of like a wooden frame over it if you really needed to. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's probably worth trying. I think that you could probably figure out a way. Yeah, and you just gotta you know, make sure that it's, you know, test it, spray it with a yeah. hose maybe, I don't do, know. <laughs> do what small libraries do everywhere, right? You know, just um, try it and figure it out as you go. Yeah, um, and we have a suggestion here from someone else who I'm um, helping out saying to tell the person they can get a small awning at Lowe's um, for a couple of hundred dollars. There or you go. Home Menards, wherever, you know, you should you could get something small and cheap to just put over it, something, you know, freestanding or whatever. Um, or maybe something that attaches to the building, depending on how it works to um, help cover, you know, give it a little protection. Yeah, yeah, just give it a little, just give it a little bit of, of, of coverage. Uh, like I said, it, it took, it, it's, it, it doesn't seem to, um, short of truly doing a power wash over it, um, it didn't seem to, to absorb and even when we power washed it very little water actually went in um and i don't think that most of your weather is going to you know be quite monsoonal like that and even if it is in all honesty those are the days that the patrons are probably not coming out to use the lockers anyway right i mean that's thing <laughs> you could just say the weather's too bad we're gonna we'll do it for you tomorrow I don't yeah know. yeah i mean like if they're you know if you're expecting a hurricane they might not want to probably take that, that day off yeah. Take that oh, down. Yeah. To tell you that that was the, that to tell you that JP chimed that in, and you'll supposedly know what oh, that yay. means. <laughs> um, uh, question two that I was asking, I know you mentioned this before. What do the master keys do? So the master you keys. Make sure you have that on those on those random times when you know staff accidentally miscodes something and they can't remember what they actually coded it as, rather than sitting there trying to figure out every different combination that it could have been. Um, you just uh, see if I get the little close up one. Yeah, where that little E is right there in the middle of the lock handle. Mm -hmm. You slide the master key and pop it open and it clears the codes for you. Ah, okay. So, so that yeah. would probably answer this other question from Jan who says, what if your patron makes an error and punches a wrong, uh, a one wrong number? Is there any going back oh, for the yeah. time? Yeah, 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 yeah. If the patron, you know, if they, you know, if, if their code is one, two, three, four, and they type in four, three, two, one, it won't, it just won't unlock. They press the C button and it clears it out and it will let them start um, re entry. Yeah, there it is. Um, they press the C to start, enter their pin in. If they mess it up, they just go back to step one and press the C again. Then you just keep trying until you get it. Yeah, you get yeah. It right. And, and true story, I had an, uh, um, a very sweet little lady that, um, she, we we were telling her, you know, if she wanted the locker pickup, and she's like, "Well, I don't need it, but I she goes, I just kind of want to try it." She goes, "Can you put it in there before I, you know, like like before you close, so I can try it and see if I can do it? Because then I'll feel better if somebody's still in the building, and I can <laughs> stick my I can stick my head in and come say help." And I'm like, "Sure." So we put it all out there, and then like I saw her out there, and I saw her kind of messing with it a little bit, and I just kind of was like okay, this is not going good. This is not, she's still there. And then all of a sudden I hear the door open and I'm like, rut row. And she opens the door and she's like, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so um, she uses it. She uses it every now and again, but I just thought that that was, that was my, my, you know, the sweet little lady common kind of story that she was, she was so happy that she could figure the lockout. And I thought, okay, I was uh -huh. like, she's got it. We're good. We're good. That's awesome. All right. 
Um, da -da -da -da, I'm looking through here. I don't see any other actual questions. Anybody have anything else desperate you want to ask? Get it in right now because we'll be wrapping things up so we can be done here by five o'clock. I want to be out of here. Um, I'm sure you all do. Um, just some yeah. comments. This is, these lockers are the best idea. I am totally inspired. Thank you. Yay. Um, and then uh, just a warning, uh, Paula from the, um, the State Your State Library is going to be reaching out to you to do a webinar for them now. <laughs> Here, yeah. I look Sorry forward that. to that email. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and if there's anything else that comes in, feel free to interrupt me. But in the meantime, um, I do want to thank you for letting me share our story. But I also wanted to echo in case anybody missed uh, Kathy Zapatello, the president of the Association for Rural and Small Libraries this morning. Yeah. Um, I would just like to, to echo her thanks and, and, and happiness that we're able to co-sponsor this event and to encourage um, everybody online today to check out arsl.info for more details. And fingers mm -hmm. crossed, we'll see you guys in Sparks, Nevada this year. So, yeah, I'm. I was well. I was excited about um, so last year was supposed to be down in Wichita, which would yes. have been you know. For me, right down the street, um, but that's yes, okay. I was I was happy to have one that I could drive to, and then yeah, and then I wound up driving just to the library meeting room to watch it instead. <laughs> so saved a bunch on gas mileage, but I am uh, I, th I think that a lot of people are ready and uh, mm -hmm. will be happy when we can get back to to coming together and sharing some of these stories um, in person and and, yeah. and rounding back up with with uh, people who speak the same language, which is why I've always been such a, a big fan of, of this program every year. This is normally my, my Friday at home and I've been watching it. This was before my computer could, before my computer could hook up to my uh, television at home. I used to bring home the projector from work and I would project, I would project my computer up onto my um, uh, living room window shades. Uh -huh. and, that's how we that's how I would watch it so that wow. I could still do like my laundry and my dishes and I would just have it huge and I was like, oh, this is great. Oh, awesome. That's so cool to hear. Awesome. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's, it's been um, useful to you and, and to everybody, definitely. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't look any other questions have come into for you. So um, uh, thank you so much, Julie, for wrapping us up with a, a great session and some I think you sent home a lot of people are going to be um, got some great ideas. They're going to be trying to pull this off themselves now. <laughs> Super, I hope they do, I hope they do. Thank you. Right, thank you so much. All right, so um, that is our last session uh, for today. Um, oh, she already sent you the email, Julie, you're, you're caught. <laughs> um, all right, so that wraps it up for um, the Big Talk of Small Libraries 2021, the 10th annual Big Talk. Um, our 10th conference. Um, thank you everyone for being here. I, um, I said it earlier in the morning, we um, thank you so much. We had almost um, a thousand registrations for today's uh, conference, the most ever. So that is you know, huge for us. We're really happy that we're able to get this information out to you and have all these great uh, speakers from small libraries share all the awesome things that they are doing um, in their libraries. Um, as